Yo, what up, what up? Pete got here in Singapore. Wanted to stop in and talk to you a little bit. Recap the day. See what's going on. Drop a couple of nuggets real quick. Today was a pretty good day. It was jam-packed, though. I will say that. Uh, woke up fairly early. We had a, an event at 11 o'clock this morning over at my sister-in-law's house. So we went over there, hung out, prayed a little bit. Hey, Avina. And um, got back just in time to change clothes and basically head out for swimming class. So baby girl had swimming class this afternoon, came back, gave her a bath, fed her dinner, and then started her hair. And we just finished, maybe 20 minutes ago. I know it's terrible, right? But I don't know. This is what happens when your classes are in the afternoon and you have hair to do and it takes you a couple hours. So got that done, though. And I feel pretty good about it. Um, I just feel badly that she has to be up so late. So hopefully she'll be okay tomorrow morning when she gets up for school. But in the meantime, I want to talk to you about something that's been on my heart for a couple of days now. So I've been thinking about this, right? And the more I, first of all, I'm watching Once Upon a Time with my mom. And the more I watch it and I realize, you know, all of these things that are going on, there is no reason inside of you that makes you a bad person everything is about how you manage your emotions and what happens outside of you and how you take that because if you think about it and wicked has proven this right and so is maleficent the movie when you look at the story from the point of view of the villain they're not bad people either they just weren't able to let go and move on they weren't able to put things in perspective they only knew how to focus on what was going wrong and remedy that one thing that went wrong. Vengeance, right? Fix it. I want this and this is all I want and I can't have this. Well, I'm going to go get it. Whether it's good for you or not, it doesn't matter. Whether it hurts people or not, it doesn't matter. I want this. I'm over here watching um, the, the evil queen try to get her stepson to love her by forcing him. Only to find out that, you know, she did it because it was something that was done to her. And the only reason her mother was completely crazy is because something was done to her. And neither one of them could let it go. So let's think about this. These people were capable of good and capable of evil. But because of a lack of education, because of a lack of intelligence, they didn't know how to manage their emotions and then move forward with their life. They kind of got stuck where they were. Because they refused to see that there were other options available to them. They only wanted what they saw in front of them that they couldn't have. And that's it. That's all there was. That's all she wrote. We get flashbacks in in Once Upon a Time, right? You get bits and pieces of their backstory to figure out who they were, what happened. And when you look at Regina, there were moments where she was very, very sweet. She was loving towards Snow White as a child. And yes, she did tell Snow White a secret and Snow White did, you know, screw up and let it out of the bag. But the reason Snow White said something is because she felt like it would help the situation, not knowing the intentions of the grandmother, not knowing the intentions of Regina. She thought she was doing the best that she possibly could for that situation. She thought by saying something, maybe she could stop someone from living a loveless marriage. Little did she know that it was going to go backfire on her. But isn't that why they say the road to hell is paved with good intentions? You do the best you can with what you have in that moment. Maybe it's a good decision, maybe it's a bad decision, but what you do after that, it really means a lot. It really means a lot. Case in point, I got pregnant right uh, while I was in college and I wanted the baby, but the, the reaction I got from my then ex-boyfriend he was just a boyfriend he wasn't a fiance yet the reaction I got from him was like I had ended his life like I made this decision on my own and I was going to end his life and he better quit football and he better quit everything and he better just go find a job now because he's not going to live anymore he's basically dead he's a parent that's the reaction I got and for a girl who's won nothing more than the unconditional love of a child I found myself suddenly like disappointed and stuck myself I find myself feeling feelings like damn I didn't I didn't want to raise the child without a father I don't want to do that to a child I know what that's like that feels weird it feels difficult and I didn't want to do that to my child 
and I didn't want to drag someone along with me because they had no choice now. They were a father. And I found myself wanting to end my own life because I didn't want to be caught in that situation in the first place. I couldn't do that either. That wasn't right either. And it could have gone in several different ways. I could have decided to not marry him but have the child anyway, which means he would be forced to come be present or not in the child's life and deal with me until he decided he didn't want to anymore. And I would have to deal with those feelings somehow or another. I ended up dealing with those feelings anyway because he just wasn't the guy for me. Or I could hold it over his head and demand that he you know, be present in his, in his child's life and, and demand that his parents did something about it. And, you know, I could have demanded a lot of things. I didn't. It wasn't right for me. I could have f- forced him to marry me because that would be the right thing to do according to our culture. And I didn't do that either. I could have dropped out of school and had the baby. I didn't do that either. And ordinarily, if you had put the, you know, the, the question to me, ordinarily, if I was not physically involved in the situation, if you had asked me about abortion, I would have been like, hell no. Hell no. But suddenly in that moment, in that situation, I saw that I was causing a lot of people a lot of misery. And I was so depressed I couldn't see my way out of it. I felt terrible. And then he started He started talking to me about, you know, well, we could do this and I would stay with you, just get rid of the child and we could do this again later. We just, this is not right time. It's not when neither one of us have our degrees and how are we going to do this? And I let him sweep me up in that. Why? Because I wasn't strong enough to stand up on my own two feet. I wanted approval still. And for me to sit here right now and admit that to you, that means I had to do a lot of digging. I had to face a lot of my demons I had to emotionally dig deep and handle all of my shortcomings in that moment. And as I tell you the story, you probably feel sorry for me. Wow, you know, I hope you, I wish you didn't have to go through that. Well, I did go through that. And that was my choice. And I wasn't equipped to handle it at the time. But I did the best way I knew how. And my mom helped me the best way she knew how. And somehow we managed. Somehow I came out okay. Yeah, I lived through an abortion at the age of 22. My first, unfortunately not my last, I never thought I'd ever go through that again. I thought I'd be smarter than that. But because I didn't have anyone to talk to about those things, and because I I handled it on my own, and what I mean by on my own is, my mom, the best way she knew how for me to get over this was for me to go get a job within a couple weeks of this procedure go get a job and at that time it was a situation where I had to walk a mile and a half in the sun to get to work every day and back again at the end of the shift and while it did get me out of bed and stop me from just moping around the rest of the summer it still didn't allow me the time and the space to really deal with what I was going through because while my boyfriend at the time still came to visit me. I think he was just grateful that I went through with what he wanted me to. I gave him the freedom to be himself again. It just wasn't the same. And I couldn't talk to him about it because we'd end up fighting. I couldn't talk to my mom about it because it was pretty damn depressing to her. And no one else really knew. So it was something I had to hold on to by myself. I dealt with that depression by myself. I wanted to die, really, really wanted to die. And I've never said this out loud before to the general public. But Swamiji, the man I thought was like God to me, he he took the place of my paternal grandfather. I'd never known him, but I've known Swamiji all my life. Swami Satchananda was a big part of my life. And at the time... He knew I was pregnant. And before I went through the, with the procedure, he said, don't do that. Don't do it. You made one mistake. Okay. Don't make another mistake on top of that. You get through this. It'll be okay. Don't get rid of this baby. And I remember once I did go through with it, I avoided him the rest of the summer. I didn't want to see his face. I didn't know how I could stand before him again. I was this... 
he made me feel like this pure and clean and, and good person. And after that, I didn't feel pure, clean or good. And I couldn't face him. And it just so happened that that, that fall, he went off to India and um, did his usual travels and stuff. And it wasn't but a couple of months before I got the call that he had passed away. And as silly as it was, at the time I thought I killed him. Because I didn't show up, I didn't face him. I didn't tell him I was sorry. I didn't own up to what I had done. I really thought I killed him. I really thought that my defiance, me, <laughs> me being selfish and weak, it took me a very, very long time to go back to yoga. It's the reason I stopped dancing. I couldn't face it anymore. But just think about that. That could have gone a thousand different ways. I could have decided I could unleash the pain I was feeling inside of me on the people around me instead. I could have decided I would punish my ex for forcing me into a situation like, like I was in. But I didn't, and I don't know what it was about that situation that I didn't do any of those things. Maybe it was so Swamiji's grace. The fact that he taught me better. I had to find a way to mourn my child. I had to find a way to look at myself in the mirror every day and continue with school. And honestly, it was after that that I changed my major from biology to psychology because I couldn't figure it out on my own. I needed help. So you see, if you study the villain story all the way from the beginning, chances are you'll find someone just so deeply pained and hurt that they can't see their way out of it except to inflict the same kind of pain that they felt so that they may feel a little reprieve. What they end up finding out, though, that still isn't a reprieve. You still don't get a break. That pain still doesn't go away. It feels good for a moment. Revenge is a quick fix. You still have to deal with your emotions. You still have to deal with those things that happened to you and why and understand so you can move forward. You still have to deal with your emotions. And unfortunately, when we react like that, we have a lot of actions to deal with after that. When I speak to my clients, it's hard for me to ask them to look at the other person. What could they have been going through for them to react or behave the way they did for you to feel the way you did? I deal with a lot of young women who have this problem where they're dealing with a man and they, they want him to be the one. They want him to be the one so badly that no matter what red flags they see, they brush them aside. No, it's just a one-off thing. No, it, you know, he's not like that. When he's with me, it's just amazing and we feel so great together. Yeah, you want to be accepted. You want to be loved. Who doesn't? But the warning signs are there for a reason. So you don't have to feel the pain later on when it's kind of grown into something bigger than it should have been. I mean the pain, not the relationship. Maybe he told you along the way that he wasn't ready for a relationship. Maybe he told you along the way that he, he didn't want to be serious with anybody. And maybe you took it as a challenge. Oh, he says he's not being going to be serious, but it's because he hasn't found the one. And you know what? I'm the one and I'm going to show him and I'm going to get my hopes up. And I'm going to pretend like he's got me already. I'm going to give him my all because if I just love him through this, he's going to want me forever. He's never had a love like this before. And let me tell you something. I get it. I've been right where you are. I saw the warning signs with both of those men. I carried on because at that point I had invested time and I had years. We've been together for years. And how am I going to throw this away? We've been together for years. Well, guess what? I ended up throwing it away anyway, didn't I? Because at the end of the day, we weren't actually a good match for each other. 
he told me along the way he wasn't a good match. And I told him along the way that he wasn't a good match. But I wanted to fit so badly. We ended up hurting each other instead. And now I'll be a bad guy in his story. And he's a bad guy in mine. We're not bad, though. <laughs> we just hurt. We were very hurt. He cheated on me. Both of them did. And I don't know the exact reason why. But I know that they weren't getting what they wanted from me somehow. And whether they were able to articulate that or not, I don't remember now. We fought so much about so many things, I don't even remember what he actually said he wanted, or if he said he wanted it. So many misunderstandings. So much time spent in the wrong places. Because I wanted it to fit so badly. Because I didn't want to go out and start all over again. I didn't want to be by myself. Who wants to actually be alone? Well, to be honest, right now I don't mind. But I do get lonely sometimes. But the point being... No one starts off pained, hurt, wanting revenge. There is a reason for those things. Something happens from outside of you that triggers something. And then you react. And that's where the problem starts. If we were able to have a conversation, if we were able to sit someone down and say, Hey, you know what? You said something the other day. It hurt my feelings. And I'm not sure why you said it. But I'd love to know what you meant. What were you thinking? I want to understand because I want us to be closer than we are right now. Could you imagine a world where we could all say that without feeling stupid? Or being ashamed to open up and ask? Being worried that if we open up somebody might reject us? Can you imagine? That's what I want. Honestly. I don't want you guys to hurt anymore. I don't want you guys to look for revenge, to hurt the person that hurts you. No, it's not the best way to get what you're looking for. Because we're all looking for the same thing. So from the villain's point of view, they were justified. You hurt me, I hurt you back. Because no one's taught me that there's another way. No one's taught me that the other way, being the bigger person, even though it takes more time and requires a lot of patience, is worth it in the end. No one's taught me that. So here I am, hoping I can teach you that. There is a better way. You can let go of people. It is natural to outgrow people. I want you to live your best life. In order for you to live your best life, you need to know all about you. You need to reconcile a lot of things in your past so you understand you. Because once you understand you, you can tell people effectively what you want and how you want it. Why do you think prostitution survived this long? Because two strangers meet up, there's money exchanged, which means they feel like because money is exchanged, I can tell you what I want and how I want it and you need to deliver. Why can't we do that in our relationships? We've committed to the person. The goal is marriage. Why can't we speak like that? I hope you understand where I'm coming from. This is what I'm revealing to you. This is what I believe. Everyone's good at heart. I really, really believe that. I'm not perfect. I am the bad guy in a couple people's stories. I'm not sure I know all the people who would call me the bad guy. But that's okay. I have a feeling my stepdaughter might think I'm the bad guy because I left. I have a feeling, depending on who my ex-husband is speaking to, I'm the bad guy. And when it suits him, I'm the girl that got away. I know in my ex-fiance's life, I'm probably the bad guy because I left him. In the end, I left because I couldn't be the person they wanted me to be. 
because I was barely being myself. And if you are supposed to be the man I spend the rest of my life with and I can't be myself in front of you, I got to worry about whether you'll accept me or not. I have no business being there then. I'm lying to you by pretending that everything is okay. Yeah, I'm both hero and villain. Sounds like a real Kamala Hassan thing to say, but guess what? I am. Random Zendetana. I'm the hero and the villain. Just depends on who's telling the story. I feel like I'm rescuing myself in my life. I feel like I rescued my daughter in my life. Give her a couple years, she may turn and say, Nope, you screwed my whole life over. Who knows? But you do have that power within your hands. The power to create and destroy. The power to live and let live. The power to hold on to a grudge or move forward because you learned the lesson. That's on you. I can show you where to look. I can tell you what I know and teach you the things that I use in my own life. But beyond that, honey, you got to figure the rest of it out on your own. You got to try and see what fits for you. Trust me, letting go is less of a burden. It means less stress in your life. You got questions? Ask them. Leave them in the comments. Comment. Message me. Let's talk. You want to rant and rave and tell me off? That's fine too. Leave me a message in the comments. DM me. I'm still here. I'm not perfect. I'm telling you what works for me. When we talk, we discuss what might work for you. We try everything possible until you find something that works for you. Because guess what? At some point you're going to let go of my hand and I want you to know what works for you. Without having to ask anybody else. So you decide. Will you be the hero or the villain? Knowing that the difference is a little emotional intelligence. Knowing better and so doing better. I love you guys. I'll catch you again later. Bye.